Welcome to the Big Four Accounting Firms podcast, brought to you by BigFourAccountingFirms.com and the Big Four Accounting Firms YouTube channel. Before we get started, just wanted to remind everybody to support us if you have a chance or if you can. Even a dollar helps. And we have a link in the description to a website called Buy Me a Coffee. It's just a way to donate to us and support us. Again, any amount is helpful so that we can keep putting out content. And there's also other ways for you to support us in the show notes to this podcast or on YouTube in the description. In today's podcast, I wanted to discuss some more news regarding the Big Four's potential breakup in the UK. There's been multiple news stories coming out about the Department for Business, Energy, and Industrial Strategy in the UK is set to publish reform proposals before Christmas. And the reason for this is there's been a ton of fraud or claims of fraud and wrongdoing by the big four accounting firms in the past few years. And it's still ongoing. And somebody at the BEIS, which is the acronym for this this organization, this government entity said, strengthening our corporate governance and audit regime will help to ensure the UK remains a world leader in corporate transparency and advance its status as a place of the higher standards in audit. And we've been covering a prior podcast about how uh, these big four accounting firms are now trying to sell their their advisory services groups in the UK, mainly their transaction advisory services groups, to private equity firms. They're trying to break up themselves. They're basically giving in because they realize how tough it is to comply with this. They can't get their partners and their staff to basically audit to a higher standard. And the latest cases are things like ENY and Wirecard, where Wirecard was part of the fintech sector, collapsed earlier this year because it admitted that cash was missing. And now some recent news came out about Wirecard that ENY might be prosecuted criminally because... There might have been some really bad misconduct by ENY there that led to Wirecard's collapse, and maybe they were in on it. And then PwC had some issues too with BHS, and KPMG had a lot of controversy with Carillion, if you'll remember that. We covered that over many years. And Deloitte, KPMG, all of them had faced pretty extensive fines in the UK, and it's because of these scandals that they're facing these regulations. But now we're actually seeing what's going to come here of we're actually going to see some documents coming out about what the big four are going to have to do. And some say that there's a lot of nervousness and anxiety at the big four accounting firms, which I agree that there should be because they're about to lose a whole bunch of revenue that could be allocated against partners. They have to decide how they're going to split the firms up, how they're going to get work done. And it's going to be a lot of red tape dividing the advisory and the audit portions of the big four, which is theoretically what they're going to have to do. And they've already been working on it, right? We've covered multiple stories of them having to sell. So partners should be worried. And it's also, as I said before, that they're admitting defeat by doing this, by not fighting back, or they fought back in the past and they just can't do it anymore because the fraud keeps getting uncovered. And and I don't think anything's going to change because the ethics and the tone of the top of the big four accounting firms just hasn't changed. So this is going to continue to happen. And I don't think it's always a conflict of interest between the accounting firms, between the audit branches and the advisory lines of service. I don't think that's always causes the fraud. I think that's a lot of people point to because that's what came out of Enron and that scandal and Sarbanes-Oxley. But it's not that. It's People don't know enough about the big four accounting firms and how they operate. The main problem with the big four accounting firms is that they're constantly pushing utilization and revenue goals. You have to be working around the clock and you have to be selling a new project all the time. And what this leads to is that partners just don't care about the actual work that gets done or they're not excited about it because they've done it so many times. And there's so many checklists that they think it's you can take it for granted. But they don't do things like check cash. And if they do, they just check it in a spreadsheet. They don't actually verify it themselves or review the documents that support it. They're just not doing the work on the ground and they're not reviewing it extensively enough. They're not reviewing the accounting principles that they're supposed to. 
and that work is just not being done. And I think in the UK, there's just going to be more regulation. And there's some talk in these articles about the mid-tier firms challenging the big four for non-auditing services and just challenging them in general. And I think that's going to happen. There's already audit rotations that have to occur, but big four accounting firms are just too big right now to get challenged. But if the accounting firms just lean into this regulation, then eventually they can be regulated down to mid-tier firms. And maybe that's the way it goes. But the mid-tier firms aren't immune to fraud or lack of review or negligence either. You're going to see the same issues there because it's the same people that work at both places. So I think the message today, similar to other things going on in the world, is that you have to take your own career into your own hands. You can't just go along with what seems like it's all right if it's actually wrong. You have to fight back. You have to speak up. And if you lose your job, then it's worth losing your job over. It's worth, you shouldn't work in a place where it's completely unethical, but you you see what happens. These firms are working towards getting regulated out of business if they keep going on this track. And we've already seen that happen with Arthur Anderson in the early 2000s. So it's not impossible to happen. And what happened to Arthur Anderson was a little bit extreme because some government regulators there just wanted to put them out of business to to make a big statement to the world, or they wanted to to inflate their egos by showing that they could take an accounting firm out of business. But just because that was an extreme case doesn't mean there's not another government employee or regulator out there that won't seek to do the same to the big four accounting firms in the United Kingdom. So that's the update for today. To get future updates, make sure to subscribe to this podcast. And if you can financially support us, you can do so through the the buy me a coffee link in the show notes to this podcast. And by financially supporting us, you can help us create more content, put more content on YouTube and on our website. Thanks for listening.